I hear there's a rumor that Tom Holland might uh, do Marty McFly. Back to the Future 4. I'm sure it's not real. I'd be down with that. I feel like we need some more Back to the Futures. I think we need to go back to all the places. So, anyways. Uh, but we got cybersecurity to learn today. So, let's get started. Hello. Welcome to another Cybersecurity 101. I am Mark Hemingway, content producer, creator here at Archer Energy Solutions. How is everyone today? How are you? You doing good? Good. That's good. I hope you're doing good. I'm doing okay. Doing good. The weather's changing. It's getting nicer out. Hopefully. Maybe I just jinxed it. It's probably going to rain now for the next six weeks. Anyway, we have things to do. All right, so today we're going to talk about rootkit. Um, I've never heard this term before. Uh, this was a suggestion to me, so I'm just basically going off of, uh, of that. So, with that said, uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the lowdown of the show, I use ChatGPT to learn uh, cybersecurity terms. And so, um, I ask questions, they tell me the answers, I tell you the answers, and I thought... I'll just document this and share this, and if people are interested and people want to check these out, great. Yay. I'm happy to help. Um, Because I'm also learning at the same time, because I don't know what these things are. I hear them a lot. Uh, And sometimes I don't hear of any of these, and some of them are scary. There's a lot of malware and scary things out there. All right, so let's get started. Loaded into ChatGPT is what is a rootkit? A rootkit is a malicious software that provides unauthorized access to a computer or network while concealing its presence. All right, so we're already back into the bad stuff again. So, uh, malicious software. So, rootkit. It doesn't sound terrible. It doesn't sound like some of the stuff that I've heard. So, all right, since we know it's malicious software, let's uh, find out how does a rootkit function. A rootkit functions by hiding its existence and actions from users and security measures, often by modifying systems, components, and exploiting vulnerabilities. All the things. Awesome. All right, no messing around. So uh, how can a system be infected with a rootkit? A system can be infected with a rootkit through various means, such as downloading malicious software, visiting compromised websites, and exploiting security vulnerabilities in the operating system or software. All right. So, all the ways, as usual. You just go in, you put your phishing line into the bad place of the internet, and you just see what bad thing you can catch. So... Don't eat the fish. Throw it away. Don't fish for it. There's a a lesson in there. There is. All right, so you got yourself a rootkit infection. What does that look like? So what are common signs or symptoms uh, of a rootkit infection? Common signs of a rootkit infection include unusual system behavior, slow performance, unexpected crashes, unexplained network activity, and the presence of hidden files or processes. Or processes. You pick. All right, so you got yourself a rootkit. Sorry about that. How can you remove a rootkit from your system? We're not getting one in the first place. Uh, Removing a rootkit involves using specialized antivirus and anti-rootkit tools. Uh, It often requires booting from a clean source, like a rescue CD, to perform a thorough scan and removal. Regularly updating your security software and maintaining a clean backup is crucial. So back up your stuff just in case bad things happen. Because they do. They happen. Bad things happen to good people. That's what that saying is, and that that saying is true. So, because the bad people are looking for the good people to do the bad things. All right, so how bad are these rootkits? How bad are they? Uh, What role do rootkits play in cybersecurity threats? 
All right, rootkits play a significant role in cybersecurity threats by providing stealthy and persistent access to systems for malicious actors. Uh, they are often used to conceal other malware, uh, steal sensitive information, or create backdoors for unauthorized access. Coming from all the all the angles, all the sides, all the places. Hmm. Oh man. But there's a new a new malware type every day. They're running out of names. That's probably why this one's called Rootkit. Sounds like something you go to the dentist to have done. Can I have a root kit for my root canal? That wasn't very good, but you know, you get the idea. All right, so here at uh, Archer Energy Solutions, uh, we specialize in protecting critical infrastructure. So how vulnerable is critical infrastructure to root kits? Of course it's vulnerable. Why wouldn't it be vulnerable? Everything's vulnerable, right? Critical infrastructure is vulnerable to rootkits. There we go. See, <laughs> So as they exploit weaknesses in systems controlling essential services like energy, transportation, and communication, protecting critical infrastructure from rootkit attacks requires a robust cybersecurity measure uh, and continuous monitoring. I don't know how you're supposed to like monitor for all these things all at once. I guess you're just supposed to make sure that you're backed up, you're patched, uh, you're constantly making sure that everything's updated and everything's secure and safe and um, yeah, I guess the, the way to not have to worry about all of them is to protect yourself from any of them to begin with. Yeah. All right, let's wrap up this episode with my favorite question which is what is a real life rootkit incident all right stuxnet again here we go so one real life rootkit incident involves stuxnet worm discovered in 2010 uh, stuxnet targeted supervisory control and data acquisitions so SCADAs we've learned about those um, particularly those used in Iran's nuclear program uh, it used multiple zero day we learned that vulnerabilities and sophisticated techniques to hide its presence, highlighting the potential for targeted attacks on critical infrastructure using rootkits. There you go. Everything's been out there, it's been done, and it's been getting people, and hopefully it doesn't get you. So just make sure you're constantly being aware of your surroundings when you're online. Uh, don't click suspicious links. Don't click links that you think, well, you know, that might be it. You know, call your buddy, call your boss, verify that, that they sent you something to click on uh, or to download or an attachment in an email. So all that fun stuff, however you need to do it. As usual, you can follow us on all of our social media platforms at Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And also don't forget to jump on over to YouTube. Uh, we are listed at Archer U. Uh, and you can like, subscribe, uh, share, we have a lot of different videos up there on a lot of different subjects, uh, not just this one. So um, shoot on over there and let your friends know there's cool stuff happening over here at Archer. So, all right, cool. Thank you, and I'll see you next week. Bye. You can catch new episodes every Thursday. Follow us on YouTube at Archer U. Like, subscribe, and click the bell notification to be notified when a new episode has been released. Is there a question or a topic you'd like Mark to address on an upcoming episode of Cybersecurity 101? Leave them in the comments below and check back in every Thursday for a brand new episode.